Hello, it's Lewis Matheson here, and in this video I'd like to talk through the GCSE Physics Online website, primarily aimed at teachers and parents. Uh, I'm going to be talking about why I designed the website in the way that I did. If you're a student watching this, that's fantastic. You'll probably know a lot of this already, but I'm going to go through why I designed it the way I did. So I started making videos for A-level physics when I was the head of physics at Beach and Cliff School in Bath. I then moved to Kingswood School in Bath, where I was the head of science, and therefore I was responsible for all of the stuff that happened at GCSE. And I realised when I was teaching the course myself that there weren't the kind of videos that I wanted my students to watch. Also, I realised that nationally, and internationally as well, I suppose, there's a shortage of physics teachers. So that means that a lot of students who are doing GCSE physics are not being taught by a specialist physics teacher. So hopefully the teachers can use this along with their own resources to help the students in their schools. So this is a website, gcsephysicsonline.com. Um, I've tried to make it as clear and easy for students to use themselves so you don't have to necessarily talk it through and show it to your students. Um, what I did was uh, I made sure that everything here uh, can actually be sorted out by exam board so that the students doing whichever exam board they're studying, they get just the right videos. Now before I even made any part of the website, I basically planned out which videos I wanted to make and kind of thought about, you know, which area of physics could this be? So here is my list, and um, you'll see that uh, some of these are kind of sort of maths for physics. I've got some of the essential skills, uh, things I found from my own teaching that, you know, students didn't know how to use a protractor. So really basic things, but things that a lot of students from year nine upwards often struggle with. I've also in this actually worked out which exam board the videos are going to be suitable for. So for example, standard form explained, it's probably recommended for most students, although they don't actually have to know about why standard form is used. But I've got videos that uh, I go through some examples of it. I go through how it links to significant figures and so on. So there's loads of stuff out there. Now, as, I, as you go down, or as I go down, you can see that there's just a massive list of videos. And again, I've tried to make sure in this document here, I've mapped each video to each exam board. I've also decided, uh, looked into which are for the physics only, like the triple science, or which are for double or combined award science as well, um, as well as what's higher tier in foundation. So basically I had this kind of big spreadsheet here and initially I started with AQA and the English exams, uh, but you can see I've also done it for Northern Ireland, for SEA, and also Wales for WJC, as well as international IGCSEs for CIE and Edexcel. So, Basically, this is my list of all the stuff that I've made over the last year. Some of them in yellow I haven't actually filmed yet. So there's also other videos that I've realised that, you know, for example, um, communication satellites is mentioned in Wales, but not in other specifications. So that's on my to-do list. And you can see that I've made most of them, but there's a, a few more that I still need to be doing. So this is like my big plan for going on to next year as well. However, at the moment, there's pretty much everything that most students need to help them with GCSE physics. And what I did on the website was I made sure that the students could just simply click on whichever exam board they're studying, perhaps AQA, and then it brings up the videos that they need um, by topic. So this is what they'll be used to using in school. I've also attached um, links to the official AQA or the exam board websites so students and teachers can see the latest information. This includes the official specification, the equation sheet, and so on. And within each of these, I've got, again, how to use a website. Um, let's click on atomic structure, for example. When you click on atomic structure, there are then different topics underneath it. Um, and if we maybe look at uh, half-life, for example, when they click on that, it then brings up a video all about half-life, as the name suggests. I've also then got worked examples, and depending on the kind of question, I've got maybe one or two worked examples. The idea being, in the ideal world, that the students can watch the video, so they can revise the content, or maybe they learn the content before the lesson. Um, there's then a worked example, and the students can have a go at that worked example, they can have a go at that question, maybe on a piece of scrap paper, and then when they click and play the video, they can then see that I go through how I would approach this question. So I'm modeling best practice, the way that teachers actually present stuff. Um, the other thing here is I've got loads and loads of quick questions. If I click on this, it brings up a question about what's in that video. And this is why I'm quite impressed with this because you know some other people helped me with this. They checked it, then I checked it and I wrote explanations. And basically the whole point of these quick questions is to reinforce knowledge to get rid of some of the misconceptions that students have and show different ways of saying that same bit of physics. 
So rather than it being a case of getting one question correct and then quickly moving on without even reviewing what you did, the whole point in these questions is that the students have to review five statements and then they identify the fourth one. So here we've got one about radioactivity. Um, and what we'll say is that um, looking through these, it takes a while, but again, students can do this in their own time. The half-life of an element is the time it takes for the mass of the sample to halve is the false answer. So that's basically the one which is false. That means the other four statements above it, they can still be seen by the students. It reinforces correct bits of physics. And if the students are thinking, well, why is that? They can then hover over the explanation. Uh, and it's basically the mass of the sample does not decrease by half, but it's the mass of the radioactive isotope within the sample. And then what the students can do is they can click on the next button, there'll be another question, and there's another one afterwards. Uh, they can just close this window down, or if they're stuck, they can always press the help button to actually work out how to answer those questions. So that's all there on the web pages um, by each topic, and then to get back, you just press the back button. You can see how it's all arranged, that uh, hopefully nice and colourful and quite interesting. Other things I've got at the moment include, in this case for AQA, I've got my own student guides I wrote. So this is based on the specification. It's not copying it, AQA, if you're watching this, I did not copy the specification. I rewrote it in my own words, so it's a student-friendly version. It talks about the structure of the exams. It talks about and makes it a lot clearer than the specification exactly what the students need to know. Again, they're free to download on the website. I've also got for AQA some of the summary videos. Uh, these are proving really popular on YouTube, so you can find them all here. And also, I've got a link to all the past papers. Often, students go to past papers and they maybe find it a little bit difficult to find what they need. So I've got the past papers for the current specifications and linked to the old specification past papers for all of these eight exam boards that you can see along the top. Again, the website, hopefully it's quite straightforward. Um, now, in terms of the website itself, uh, I'm actually editing it on a thing called Wix. There's no particular secret there. Um, and in total, if we look at the amount of pages, because I've got the index for AQA and one for SEER and Edexcel, there's quite a lot of index pages which are specific to that exam board. Um, as we go down, you can then see that I've got lots of pages which, um, and whichever one we click on, let's maybe look at resistors in parallel. This one here is a topic that people don't need to know about for every single exam board. And at the top of each page, uh, you'll see that um, AQA is greyed out, so it's not relevant for AQA. It is useful for SEER in Northern Ireland. It's useful for WJEC in Wales, and it's useful for the Cambridge International Exams. These are the only three exam boards where you need where students have to look at calculating the resistance of parallel resistor combinations. And again, at the bottom of each page, there are links to other videos. Some of them are at A-level. So this is a, an A-level video about parallel uh, resistors and how to calculate stuff. There's also then um, resistors in series and parallel from another page. So in addition to the actual videos, which are really useful, there's also suggested videos. Some are to do with related topics and some introduce the A-level work for the more able students to kind of see what the next step is. Now, on the website, I've got about, um, I think, 200 to 250 different pages which have all been edited. That took a while, and it's a boring, boring job. Not quite as bad as writing school reports and things, but there's a lot of pages that you can see down there. Um, then I've got the pages for Maths of Physics. I've got some like normal uh, kind of stuff that goes on the website. And underneath this, I've got the light boxes. So these are the questions, the quick questions. Each one of these um, numbers is a different quick question. You can see how many are out there. There's quite a lot. Um, I think I'm approaching about 800 different pages in total on the website at the moment. Now, I am obviously continuing to improve it. I want to make that it sure that any student can use this without having to be shown it by their teacher. I want it to be better than what's out there. I want this to be the best GCSE physics resource in the world, to be honest. Um, I think there's lots of other platforms out there which are quite good. Sometimes they've got an amazing platform, they've got a big marketing budget, but the actual quality of the lessons that they deliver isn't very good. Other times I've seen websites that don't work that well. And also I've seen some websites which are better at revision rather than actually trying to teach everything from scratch. This isn't to replace you teachers, it's just to help you so that you know that you've got a guaranteed source of high quality videos that you can set your students if they've missed work, for flipped learning, for homeworks, for revision, or if indeed schools are actually shut as we're finding out now. 
Um, again, at the bottom of the website, I do have a full list of all the videos that I've made. Um, you can see that the majority of them, about 200 videos, are completely free to view on the website. So that is something that is on YouTube, it's all on the website so students can get used to it. In order to help fund this website, because it's costing me money to run it and to make it, and the fact that I've uh, basically quit my full-time teaching job, I'm not paying into my pension, that's why at the moment I've also got these premium videos, um, which are behind the paywall, uh, and, if, you know, and I think that's something that either students can buy individually, if you don't want to buy it as a school, or you can just buy a school subscription, and then that means that every student from year nine upwards can access all the videos uh, to help prepare for their exams. So that is a bit of the behind the scenes stuff for GCSE Physics Online. Uh, a lot of work has gone into it. I know that a lot of your students are already using it and they're finding it really useful, but that is not the end. There's gonna be a lot more coming over the next one, two or three years, including lots more worksheets that you can use. Uh, I know slop questions are quite uh, popular at the moment, so there'll be a lot of uh, kind of worksheets that students can have a go at um, to help them with the learning. And obviously as teachers, you can use that to set for cover. Uh, I've got lots more videos to make, including the missing videos for some of the exam boards, as well as required practicals and more practical skills, as well as past papers and past papers and past papers. A few things to do over the next few years. In addition to this, I'll also be doing A-level physics online. I'll be updating that to make it more like the GCSE website. So there's gonna be lots of A-level videos coming out. And also I've got teaching physics online, which would be designed for teachers to help you uh, in terms of some ideas that you could use for your teaching. I know lots of teachers use this material to help them get some ideas, but I'd like to do more uh, teacher specific CPD about physics and teaching in general, working with lots of other people around the place who actually know more about this than I do. So lots of exciting things to happen. Anyway, that is GCSE Physics Online.